you were really smart, you wouldn't need a calculator to know there was something wrong. Yeah, there was, a, there was a, a, a short story called The Devil and Simon Flagg, where Simon Flagg makes a deal with the devil, and part of that deal is that he can keep his soul if the devil can prove Fermat's last theorem. And of course, the devil can't prove Fermat's last theorem. Fermat's last theorem crops up in Star Trek. X to the nth plus Y to the nth equals Z to the nth. It crops up in Doctor Who, the 11th Doctor, in order to prove himself, rewrites Fermat's original proof. It pops up in Bedazzled, the film with Liz Hurley, where she plays the devil as well, so it's quite a devilish link to Fermat. It pops up in Arcadia, played by Tom Stoppard. So, so it's very much a bit of maths that people can use in, in novels and films and plays because it sort of has a bit of glamour around it. And, and people have perhaps vaguely heard of it. Recently, I, I spotted it in an episode of The Simpsons because there's an, there's an episode called The Wizard of Evergreen Terrace where Homer Simpson wants to become an inventor. And uh, he has a blackboard and we see him scribbling things on the blackboard. And one of the equations that Homer Simpson writes on the blackboard is an apparent solution to Fermat's last theorem. It's some four-digit number to the 12th power plus a four-digit number to the 12th power equals a four-digit number to the 12th power. Now, Fermat's last theorem says that that should not exist. So Homer is defying Fermat and Andrew Wiles. Now, if you have a little phone calculator and you type in the digits and you check Homer's solution, which should not exist, it turns out it's a perfectly valid solution. Hang on a second, this is a problem. <laughs> this is a big problem. Um, the solution to the problem is, it, is it's called a near-miss solution, which means that if you've got a phone calculator with only 10 decimal places, you won't see the problem. But if you go to 15 or 20 decimal places, you'll see that the, the, the equation doesn't quite balance. It's very, very close, but not quite there. His solution is 3,987 to the power 12 plus uh, 4,365 to the power 12 equals 4,472 to the power 12. Try that out on your phone calculator. It'll kind of make sense. It's not the only near miss in The Simpsons. There's another one in an episode called Homer Cubed, which is part of the Treehouse of Horror 6 episode of The Simpsons. And when I saw the second one, I remember thinking there's somebody on The Simpsons who clearly likes maths. And the culprit is a chap called David X. Cohen. Now, David X. Cohen is, uh, did physics at Harvard. I did physics as well, and physicists like maths. So that, that kind of explains David's obsession with mathematics. He then did a master's degree in computer science and then went on and published research papers in mathematics. In fact, there's a whole area of mathematics known as pancake flipping, which is a whole other story. But David X. Cohen is a serious mathematician who found his way into The Simpsons. And so every so often in The Simpsons, he will drop in little bits of mathematics. When David X. Cohen drops in these false solutions to Fermat's last theorem, he's kind of um, nodding back to his past and his love of mathematics. Um, and then the really weird thing is that he's not the only mathematician on The Simpsons. There are, um, there's a guy called Al Jean who did mathematics at Harvard. There's a guy called Ken Keeler who has a PhD in applied maths. There's um, a guy called Mike Rees who was corresponding with the great mathematician Martin Gardner, the great recreational mathematician Martin Gardner when he was a young kid. So there are a lot of mathematicians on The Simpsons, and they all drop in bits of math in The Simpsons. What should we read into the fact that all these mathematicians are on The Simpsons writing staff? Um, it, it's tricky. I, I spoke to them, I met them um, last year, uh, uh, and I said, you know, why, so why have you all um, ended up as being comedy writers? And, and they gave me various theories. One theory that many of them share is that mathematicians love logic. And therefore, they love breaking logic and playing with logic, and they love the illogical. And a lot of humour is based on that. One explanation that, that Al Jean gave me as to why they work in animation in particular is that animation is all about control. What you storyboard, what you script, appears on screen. In mathematics, what you write down on paper is what happens. Now, we can contrast that with a real action sitcom where um, you don't have control. 
you know, the actors will put in their ideas, scripts will change, scenes will change, everything is up for grabs. And science is a bit like that as well. When you do a science experiment, things change, things go wrong, test tubes break, etc. Um, so there does seem to be a very strong link between mathematicians and comedy and mathematicians who write comedy who then work in animation. When we talk about near misses, we're looking at it kind of proportionally, is it a near miss? So we're looking at four digit numbers to the 12th power. So we're looking at 48 digit numbers. And so if they're out by millions and millions, that's only a tiny amount because we're looking at such massive digits. And so on most calculators, you won't see the error. If you were really smart, you wouldn't need a calculator to know there was something wrong in, in one of these. If you look at the second one, now this one is obviously wrong. Now the reason it's obviously wrong is because this is an even number. That's an odd number. That's an even number. An even number to the 12th power must still be an even number. An odd number to the 12th power must be an odd number. An even number plus an odd number is an odd number. So that cannot equal that. When you were talking about this near miss or these two near mm. misses that were put in, is he, does he, is he paying tribute to something here or is he trolling? Is he being a troll? No, it, it, uh, it, it's very much, you know, when you, when you love something, and, and I think David X. Cohen loves comedy, he loves comedy writing, and he loves mathematics. It, it's natural to try and bring the two together. You don't force them together, and the mathematics in The Simpsons never gets in the way of the plot. But if there's an opportunity to drop something in that you love, um, you know, in the very first episode of The Simpsons, one of the kids has a lunchbox with Anatoly Karpov's picture on. Now, I remember Anatoly Karpov as a great chess player of the early 70s. Now, I guess somebody on The Simpsons writing team is also a fan of chess and a fan of, of Anatoly Karpov. Um, uh, and so these things get dropped in. And as there are so many mathematical writers on The Simpsons, they drop in an awful lot of these mathematical nods. If you'd like to help Simon buy some new monkeys to hang on those bookshelves of his, why don't you have a look at his book? It's out this week. It's all about mathematics in The Simpsons, of course. I'll put a link so you can check out the book in the video description. There will also be links to our other videos about Fermat's Last Theorem that we filmed with Simon and released earlier this week. And lastly, I'm also including a link to a 60 Symbols video I uploaded this week all about the physics of water balloons and filming them in slow motion. It's really good and I know a lot of people have been having problems with their subscription boxes on YouTube this week. So if you subscribe to 60 Symbols, which is like our sort of sister channel but about physics, and you miss that one, well now you've got no excuse.